So in this video, we're gonna get started on Spring Security in Spring NBC. What this is going to require us to do is create a user entity and a role identity. So this is the user table right here. Actually, I'm gonna bring this down here just so we don't get this mixed up. This is the user table. This is the role table. We need roles because we need the ability to have an admin so that an admin can go in and make edits. We also want the ability to have users because we don't want guests to be able to access everything. And we want that login. Honestly, really at the end of the day, we want people to log in because we want their data, as bad as that sounds. Anyway, in order to do this, we need to create what's called a many-to-many -many relationship. What we're gonna have to make is a join table. This is sometimes referred to as a join table. We don't actually create the join table. Spring JPA is going to do this for us and we just create annotations on our entities. We create a user entity, we create a role entity and Spring Data is going to create this join table for us in the form of a many-to-many -many relationship. Why are we making a many-to-many -many relationship versus just a one-to-many relationship? Well, we have a many-to-many -many relationship for roles because there can be infinite combinations of roles for users. There can be users with just all different types of roles and there can be all different types of combinations. And a many-to-many -many relationship is the most appropriate for the user role relationship. And what this is going to look like is this. We are going to have a user entity. We are going to have a role the username password are going to show up on the actual entity or the data that we send to the view and then we'll have the roles and whatever role the user has we're just going to add an admin and a user role whatever role that the user has will be returned to the view whenever we need to access the data and it will also give people the ability to be an admin and a user at the same time so that they can make edits as well as access some of the user parts as well so Let's go ahead and let's go into our IntelliJ and start creating these entities I'm talking about. The first one that we're going to do is we're going to create a user entity. You could just call this user. I don't recommend this because there is another actual object just called user and Java and they will get mixed up all the time. So I call it a user entity and it, it makes it so that it doesn't get mixed up with everything. And I think it just is a lot smoother of a development process if you call it a user entity as opposed to just a user. And then also we're gonna add all of our usual suspects. We're gonna go into here, we're gonna add a no args, we're gonna add an all args, and we're also going to add the entity so that of course Spring Data will pick up on it and be able to actually add this um, table to the database. So I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call it users. Even though it's called user entity, I'm gonna call it just users so that uh, it will be, uh, so it will follow convention more. And I'm just gonna go down here and then we're going to create a strategy. We need a uh, generation type of identity. I'm just gonna create an identity. We could make a sequence. If you are in a production environment, I would use a sequence, but because this is just a regular app and we're learning um, right now, we will just use good old identity. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring in this, and I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna give this identity, and I'm also going to make sure that this right here has an ID. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm also going to add an ID. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go string username. I'm gonna go private string email. Then I'm gonna go private string. I'm gonna call this password. And there's all different types of combinations that you can use. You could add a first name, you could add a last name. You could add some dates on here if you want to, but I'm just gonna keep it simple and just have this. And then we have, we're gonna add, go ahead and to take this with our many to many. So I'm gonna go here. And because we always need this role, whenever we're actually gonna pull a user from the database, we're gonna set this to eager because we always, we're always gonna need this role. And we don't want to use lazy loading because if we're going to need it every single time that a user accesses a page, 
we should just set it to eager so that it loads it always instead of lazy loading where it only loads it when you use a git. So we're gonna go down here, we're gonna call this join table. And I'm also gonna go into here and fill out a couple more things in this annotation. So this is going to be user roles, this is gonna be the name, and then we will go ahead and set the join columns right here. So first things first, we'll have an at, we'll call this join column. This will be the name, this will be the user ID. And we fill out all this stuff so that it will create this join table for us. If we don't fill out all of this stuff, it won't actually create this join table. You could just go in there and create your own join table if you want to, but if you want Spring Data to create it for you, <clears throat> you're gonna have to actually add all this stuff. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna say reference column name, is gonna be ID. Okay, so I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna go inverse join columns. So we're also gonna have the inverse join columns and this is going to be the other side of the actual join. So the join column here is going to be um, the role. So it'd be going to here. And some of this stuff is confusing because these annotations are so long that it's really easy to get confused. So if you get confused here, I do too. That makes you feel better. Okay, so then here I'm gonna go, this looks good. We do have a red line, but I think the red line is only occurring because we don't have the actual data down here yet. So we're gonna go roles and we'll give this a new array list just like this. And we are looking good. We are making good time. So the role and So we don't ha actually have the role yet. Let's go ahead and make the role. Then we can go back and we can fix this part right here. So I'm gonna go here. Then I'm gonna go into my, back into my models. I'm gonna right click and we're just going to create another class. We're gonna call this one a role. So we're gonna go back, give this a role and same exact process. Nothing out of the ordinary, nothing fancy. Pretty much almost the same exact thing, but a lot less configuration because we already did all of the t the actual join table creation in the first one. So this one's gonna be a lot easier. So we're gonna go in here, same thing, kind of monotonous, but it's what we gotta do, sometimes being a developer is kind of monotonous. And then we're gonna go in here and we're also going to do all the usual suspects. We're gonna go up here, we're gonna add an ID, and we're gonna add a generation Generated value, strategy, same exact thing. Generation type, and we're gonna give it identity. Okay, so that looks good. Now what we need to do, we're gonna give this just a string of a name, and then we're also going to have a many to many right here. So we'll say mapped by, we're gonna say roles, and we'll go down here. We're gonna have a private list. We're gonna go ahead, pass in this user entity. We're gonna have users. We're gonna have array list. I think there's a trash trash tr uh, dump truck outside of my house right now. So if you hear lots of banging, it is a dump truck. Okay. So this looks good. Let me see here. I got I got some kind of error right here. Oh. I need to add a new. So users new dot array list. And this is looking good. So let's go back to our user entity. Now we have a role so we can go in, create our role and we're gonna import the class. Let me make sure this role is what I want it to be for some reason. So, yep, that's the exact role that we want. We're pretty much good to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire this up and what we need to do is number one, we need to make sure that the actual uh, tables are created. It created a join table. And we also need to make sure that we put a admin and a user inside of the table as well too. Otherwise it will not be populated and we will have trouble down the road. So fingers crossed this will work. And we got no errors. So 
what we're going to do next, we're going to go into here. We're going to refresh our actual table. So let's go ahead, hit that refresh button. And oh, look at that. That is so beautiful. So let's go into here. Let's make sure that all our tables are the way that we want. So we that we have that beautiful little bridge table right here. We've got our user ID. We've got our role ID. And we're going to go into our roles. We've got a name. And let's go ahead and check our users. And that looks great. So let's go into our roles and let's add an admin and let's also add a user. So this one's going to be admin. I'm going to go here, add row. Give this a, well, actually not give that anything. So let's go ahead, hit the, if once you actually add a value to it, you need to hit that submit button or it's not going to actually do it. So always to remember to hit that submit button. And we also have two users right here. Okay, well, that's looking good. We've got a little bit more infrastructure to go after this, but after a video or two, we will actually be working on our view. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.